What up, y'all? It's your boy. It's your boy, Kawhi Steve. We're here. We're going to talk about this historical moment. Kendrick versus Drake. I'm going to go through my favorite tracks in order. Ranked. One through how many do we have? I don't even know the number. I just know the songs off the top of my head. Eight? Eight tracks? Um, Before we get into it. This last weekend was so fun. This whole entire situation, it got dark really quick, but I, I had a good time. There was, there's just something so memorable about being on the phone, being like, oh, did you hear the new disc? What, what'd you think? Like kind of reacting to this whole entire thing together. I think that was so cool and just so fun. Uh, even though, you know, it's a rap beef and it can get pretty serious. I don't know, something about like being in the zeitgeist together. You know what I mean? So I won't waste y'all time anymore. I will start with what I think is the worst track from this whole disc, this whole beef. And I think people shared this sentiment with me is the heart part six. Oh, that track is just not that good. Uh, Drake was on the defense, reasonably so. You know, he kind of got pummeled. And uh, his rapping and his flow was okay. Like, it wasn't, like, terrible. It, it did seem like he might have been a little out of energy, but I think it's because of, he had the, you know, playing on defense a little bit. Um, I think some of the angles are really weird. Like, uh, not only was he trying to make fun of Kendrick for, you know, like, like, you know, the essay, um, the song Mother I wasn't even about that. Uh, so it was like, one, you got that part of the song wrong. And then two, you kind of clowned on Kendrick for not doing his research right. Uh, when his research was all spotty around this, uh, this song just sounded like theories that he got from TikTok and Twitter and they stitched together and put it on a, on a track. Um, cause all those things that were mentioned, I was like, I literally heard this when I was like eating breakfast the day prior, um, just on TikTok and Twitter. So it, it was just weird. Uh, he mentioned Epstein, but Kendrick mentioned Weinstein. So it, it was just weird. And the whole like Drake planted, like the whole, uh, Drake Anon thing that he planted, uh, the evidence, like, that, that could be true, but, like, we kind of need more receipts on that. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's just easier ways to prove it. Like, screenshots, DMs, uh, whatever, you know? So, that track is just really strange. And I was... It was the first track where I kind of felt like, well, that wasn't worth it. And he kind of bowed out at the end, so... Whatever. The hard part six. Next one, Taylor Made Freestyle. I'm going to be honest. When I first heard this track, I was in disbelief. I was simultaneously laughing from how funny this was because it was just so disrespectful on so many levels. Like, you're using Tupac's voice. Like, this man is not here to give you permission. I know he didn't ask permission from Snoop, but Snoop posted it on his IG story. So like, I guess like, I guess it's like, he's cool with it, but like you use Tupac AI, use two West Coast great, uh, greats to bully Kendrick. And I think that's just funny from like a psychological standpoint, but it's just so disrespectful to these humans and like rap. And then the whole like AI conversation is just kind of not like reading the room. Like, uh, it's just such an interesting angle. And after the gimmick kind of wore off, I was like, this is it. But I'll be honest, uh, Drake's verse on there, it was pretty, you know, it wasn't bad. I, I liked the flow, I liked the pocket. It was pretty repetitive, but I, I liked it, you know, and I I'll go on record and say, I am a Drake hater. Like I do not, I have not liked this man's music or whatever since like 2011 for various reasons, but uh, I, I liked his rapping on his verse. I thought it was chill. Um, even when he did the Tupac and Snoop AI, like his rapping on it was fine. Um, 
I thought it was entertaining, but it was really disrespectful and leads to a whole different conversation about AI and even just like, bro, why are you doing this as like a rapper? Whatever. After that, push-ups. Push-ups is uh, next on that list. Um, yeah, push-ups was cool, man. Uh, when it came out, I was really surprised. Uh, I was like, this is a pretty good track. You know, the whole like SZA got you wiped down, Travis got you wiped down. Like, I don't agree with those angles, like with sales when it comes to like, you know, like what's good in hip hop. But I thought the angle was cool. I like because it just it's just a good angle to take if you're Drake, you know, and he sounded really in pocket. He sounded like hungry on the beat, he sounded passionate. And I was like, you know what? This is cool. He did some he did some good the pips week pipe down. Uh how you like big stepping in a like a size seven or something. Like that that was cool. Like, I don't know. I, I thought I had some bars in there. I was like, okay, Drake, like this is cool. This is gonna be interesting, you know. It made me actually excited about it because uh spoiler alert, um like that isn't on this list because even though it's a kind of a catalyst, it's like not really a diss too much. It's kind of like him just saying, or it's not outright. I feel like I don't put it compared to like, you know, how we're comparing the tracks. Like, and I like like that a lot. Um, but it was just uh it's there's no big three, it's just big me. And you know, I come from the era of control when control drops, like that was crazy. So I wasn't really like, eh, but I saw what was going on. So I feel like push-ups really kind of got the ball rolling. But yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a cool response. I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll give it up to Drake. I gotta give credit where it's due. Um, the next song, Family Matters. Um, this one I'm so conflicted on because Family Matters is simultaneously like weird with like the free the slaves bar, which kind of like proves Kendrick's point and like some of the angles in there. He did take some cool pot shots at like other people, but again. Just like push-ups, this isn't a focused track. So, which is leads to an advantage where he can kind of like give space to breathe and like, you know, push out other like other things uh on the track. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, bro, like focus up, like zone in, like hit hit, hit it, right? Hit the target, right? So um uh I, I thought that was I still thought it was cool though overall. I like the flow. I really like the production. I think the production really won me over. If you listen to my music at all, you know I like beat switches and I love switching beats and stuff like that and different flows. And I know some people didn't like the middle part or the end part, but I, I liked it. Like it was kind of catchy. It was like, you know, it's because of the boy. Like, I don't know. It was just like cool. The the bomb he dropped at the end was like, damn, like that whole like DV stuff. I was like, damn. But that's also when I was like, this is getting dark. Uh, I was like, this is kind of crazy. And there's a whole conversation to be had. Like I said, I think it's a Lil Bill uh, video that I think he had with like Think Peace Tribe and like FD Signifier talking about like the death of the diss rap uh, and how the story of Adidon kind of made it so like, okay, you need to drop a bomb. Like we need to hear the T. So hearing that T was like kind of like, uh, like we need to hear, like we need like receipts, like that needs to be addressed. Like what's up? Um... And it seems like as the story is unraveling, as of the date of this video coming out, uh, some things seem to be demystified, but I, I don't know. It's kind of a wild angle because as some people said, and I definitely thought about this too, like Kendrick has a way more, like a, 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 a bigger spot to fall from Grace song, right? Like, you know, these people are celebrities. We don't know them, right? We, we just don't know them. So we can't really put them on a pedestal or have a certain image of what they are like because we just don't know them. However, the way they portray themselves is really different. And I think Drake has created a lot of enemies over the years and a lot of reasons to not be trusted, you know, especially with the online antics. Like people don't, you know, it's shaky on the trust, but Kendrick, even though he had the, you know, I'm not your savior, uh, the, the grandstanding, the moral grandstanding he presents sometimes, like really, and people, the way people put it, you know, take it in and the subject matter of his music and the, the messaging, you know, it's kind of like, damn, if that shit was true, it's like, it's just, it's just a harder fall. There's, there's a lot more at risk, you know what I mean? But like, um, I guess that as this video today, it seems like someone is being mystified with like posts and like family supporting uh, Kendrick, et cetera. Um, and then even some of the setups that Kendrick put in that I will get to later uh on this um that may put that on shaky ground but then again spoiler alert a lot of this is just like 
he said, she said, et cetera, not really crazy amount of receipts going on outside of, you know, uh, Kendrick's covers, which I get to later, but like, that's kind of uh, where I'm at with it. So as you noticed, uh, I already listed all of Drake's songs. Um, spoiler alert, this is a 4-0 sweep. Kendrick sweeped them. Um, call me biased, whatever, I don't care. I also just think, if I was thinking unbiasedly, I don't see how any of these Drake songs won. However, I will say he put up a pretty good effort. Uh, these songs, I was definitely surprised at some of them and some of the bars and some of the energy that he had. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, he tried. He tried. That being said, the next song, I put 616. Now, this one is interesting because I think all of Kendrick's songs on here are really good. And I really like 616. It's like really like, you know, boom bappy, mind you, the East Coast, like, Stuff I grew up listening to, you know, like me just not in my head, you know, like I, I love it. I love how he went in like super lyrical with the entendres that Drake asked for. Um, and then kind of just like playing the psychological game. Like, oh, there's a mole. There's a mole. Like, like what you going to do? You don't think Ovi is working for me? Can't work for me? And like dropped it like on that Friday, and especially it was rumored that Drake was going to drop. So it's kind of cool that that happened. Um, I, I just love it. And he was like, oh, God. No, 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 no. like that flow switch I, it's just cool i like this song a lot um i might like it a little more i don't know it flip-flops between this next one i'm gonna mention but the reason why this next one so i'll talk about that meet the grams is next is because that song scared me that song was terrifying the alchemist piano on that beat was just insane. It was burning to my brain. When I was listening to it on the drive home, I was driving home and I just had it on. And, just, and when it ended, I was just sitting in my car in silence, like shook. I was like, bro, you let another, another daughter? Again, allegations, we don't know, allegations. But all the accusations on here are heavy and the way that he was just like, dear Adonis, you know, the, the potential, the potential ring, P Pedialyte ring, like what? Like, I don't know, that was just heavy. And I had a lot of conversations to bring up and even like seeing the history of like music industries, just humanity, et cetera. Um, it, it's just wild. It's, it's just a wild thing to drop in. The fact that you zoomed out and you see like it's like Drake's Ozempic, like like uh, prescription medicine with his name on it, and I know there might be some grounds that it was planted, but still at the time I was like, "Yo, this is crazy! <laughs> like this is wild," you know. So meet the Grams. The reason I put that above is just the impact. The way I was on the internet until like three a.m. After I was tired, I was already tired. But that woke me up. Just seeing everyone's reaction, seeing everyone go like live on Twitch, YouTube, mad late, like to talk about this is just wild. Like, I'll just never forget that. I will never forget that. Um, so another thing I'll never forget is this next song. When this next song dropped, uh, I was out just eating and um so i was out eating when this next song dropped and uh i was just looking at my phone and uh i was with my partner and we were like oh th there's another song there's another song like what like it was crazy so we're like oh we have to listen to it and man when this came out i already told you it's not like us this song is a banger. I played this so many times. Like the bars in here, the A minor, like that is crazy. Um, what's the other bar? At the end, he was like, he's off for you asking me he's a 69 guard. Like that is just a wild line, wild bar. Like him just straight up calling him a Pedialyte drinker. It's just wild. And the fact that it bangs in the club is everyone's like, oh, like there's no songs that are club bangers that like, you can't listen to it. Like that's what Rap Beef is. He still did it anyway. I mean, on this, on this, like Kendrick did different styles for each song. So it's like he hit him on so many different angles where 
you know, Drake's was kind of just the same type of energy. But uh, yeah, not like us. They not like us. They not like us. Run, 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 run for your lot. Like the bars on that were just—I was dying. That, that that is so funny, and I see why it's everyone's favorite. Like I totally get it. Um, it's gonna be like the song of the summer. Like the fact that they're playing it on TV. Crazy. Not like us is just insane. I love that song. That song is so good. Much it on that. Hey, oh, hey, oh, right. So um, yeah. And my personal favorite, my personal favorite is still Euphoria. <laughs> Euphoria is so good. And the reason I love Euphoria so much outside of like all the ways that he did pile up on Drake and attack him uh, in all these clever ways is that this song reminded me of why I really liked Kendrick Lamar when I first found him. I found him during the Section 80 uh, days. Um, and I was a really big fan of uh, Section 80 and um, like Overly Dedicated. And then when Good Kid Mad City came out, that was my favorite album that year. That's still my favorite Kendrick project. I really love that. And something that captivated me about Kendrick was like the way he was able to flow differently and create a story and make really good bars. You know, his storytelling is great. I think even the storytelling between all of this, like narrating from the beginning of Euphoria all the way to Not Like Us. And who knows if there's another song coming out. I'm not sure. It seems like it's over. But it kind of like painted a whole story. You know what I mean? Like even in the beginning, like when he's saying like, oh, all your angles are calculated. You're putting lies because you heard Mr. Morale. Like we know there's like a bowl um, in the OVO camp. Like, um, like pretty much for sure. But uh, it's like he just narrated this whole thing. And this whole thing is almost like a story. And I think that was really cool. And then Euphoria has so much charisma. The YNW Melly setup was so good. I loved it. When I first heard it, I was like, hey, that's tight. That That's cold. That's cold. Um, I kept saying, what is it? The braids? Like all week. The braids? Like that That part is just so funny. Um, it kept getting better. Like I said, it kept getting better after each disc. Like the back, like back to back, I like that record. Um, Every single time we had a back to back, I was like, oh, like we needed 616. I was like, oh, that's why he's referring to back to back. They needed two back to backs, right? And it's like, okay, like it's building, it's just adding more. Like Euphoria really laid out what was going to happen. It was like, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Because I already know your angles and you're not going to see what I'm going to do. But because it's going to make more sense later. It was almost like watching all those movies, like, oh, you got to watch it twice. Uh, Euphoria was great. So much charisma, so much energy, so many flows. Like I, I just really personally like that song, and I played it so much when it first came out, and I still play it a lot right now. I'm running up, not like us, um, but yeah, Euphoria, great track. Um, just so many different flows, setups, etc. Energy, I just like it a lot. So uh, that's my ranking. Uh, oh. And the best, the best one is Kawhi Steve's A Signified Prophecy, BBL Drizzy Remix. No, jokes aside, uh, if you haven't checked it out already, I did a remix to um, BBL Drizzy. Uh, as you all know, the whole Metro, he's doing that whole competition. If you're watching this later, there, there was a competition. Uh, so I did mine and uh, shouts out to FD Signifier for reposting that. That like made my day for real. Um, it's just cool. I just wanted to get in on the BBL Drizzy stuff. Uh, I, like I said, not, have not been a fan of Drake for so long. So hopping in this historical moment is really cool. And, uh, being a big uh, fan of FD Signifier and seeing his Drake video, you have to watch his Drake video if you haven't. It's really good commentary on basically the critiques on what's happening to Drake right now. Uh, at least, at least a good chunk when it comes to like cultural appropriation, et cetera. So since I wanted to come in at that angle, I I named it after uh, FD Signifier and just added a little Easter eggs there. Um, and it was just fun. So I'm, I'm glad he reposted that. Um, he really didn't have to. And uh, if any of your, uh, if any of his fans are watching this, I appreciate that you're here. So yeah, that's my ranking for uh, the Great Rap War. Um, really fun. Uh, so tune in next time. Later.